This is part four where we're working on the visuals. So one of the functions for the gig is to have the surface project out to a number of other screens and other monitors that are going to be dotted around the space. We use or have been using uh, something like this, which just very simply takes a, uh, a VJ input and then sends that out to eight different boxes, uh, which is great. I've been using it for a few years, hence the VGA. Um, so it wouldn't be that difficult to take the the display port out, the mini display port out from the surface through some kind of converter into that box and out to all those screens. Uh, that's fine, but um, cabling is always a problem. I mean, we've got a we've got a you know if you imagine a kind of a, an open space in the centre of a cathedral, the last thing you want is people tripping over cables. So I thought I'd experiment a little bit with a little. Uh, this little box here, which is a uh, one of these. It's pushed to TV, it's called. Uh, it's a Netgear box for, it's a wireless display adapter, yeah? Uh, the Surface has built-in WIDI, wi wireless display, W-I-D-I, WIDI, I suppose you call it. Uh, so that's built into the Surface. <clears throat> and this allows this, this connects to this, and then displays on another display. Yeah, it's the technology that allows you to, to project what's on your phone to your telly or project what's on your laptop or your Surface to your telly. So I'm going to attempt, I think, to use that technology to send the output to this, put that through a converter, through the box and out to the tellies. And that way, the Surface won't have to be physically connected. So that's getting rid of one huge cable, which is going to go from where I'm stationed, wherever that'll be, I'm not sure yet. Uh, across the hall to all the different screens. So uh, let me just show you how that works. I'm gonna, I'll bring you in a bit, a bit closer. So, so this is the box, very unassuming little box. And at the moment I've just got it connected up to this screen uh, via a, a DVI cable. So I haven't gone through any analog conversion yet but it's sitting there uh, waiting for connection. So on my surface, what am I gonna do? Good question. Well, let's bring up devices, project. And as I have already done this before, you add it as a wireless device and it's there. Pop. Connecting. This says it's connecting. And there you are. I've got this set up as extended desktop because that's the way I'm going to use it. And it was, it was that simple. Now, if I, uh, if I just set this to, to duplicate, maybe we can see how, uh, how quickly that, that runs. Let's go to project. Let's just duplicate. Okay, so now it's duplicated the screen. And I can show you, if I go left to right, that there is a bit of a delay. Can I get both these things in at once? I bring it over here. So maybe if I go up sideways. Oop. Can you see that? So there is a delay, but it's not desperate, but that's actually going to cause me some problems later on. Let me show you what... I mean, let's go back to extended desktop. Ta -da. Okay, so desktop, easy worship that I mentioned earlier. This is only a demo version. In fact, it's the beta version of the new version, which is not out yet. So that's given me a blank screen. Let's throw some stuff on here. So. So we have something happening there. See, it's beautiful. So down here, uh, all I've got to do is, uh, is bring up a list of stuff. It's pretty finger friendly and you essentially have a schedule down here of different videos and different loops and you double tap them 
and they uh, appear on the big screen. It can be video with audio, without. You can overlay text over the top. It's kind of extraordinarily powerful as a piece of software. Remarkably so. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do probably, a, when the full version is out, when the new version is out, I'm gonna do a full review of it. because I think it's something that other people would, be, would find very interesting. Now, there's the problem that I mentioned is with this. I have one video that we use at the end which is great and it has my friend Hannah singing of which we have some of her on the screen amongst the NASA footage. Now what you'll notice or what you should have noticed is that the uh, the voice and the video is out of sync. The reason being is that the sound is coming out of the surface uh, through the uh, Avid interface. So we're getting the sound directly, but the video is being delayed in its, in its journey through the push to TV device to the telly. So I'll end up with my audio and video being out of sync now that shouldn't happen when you're normally playing stuff from your surface to the telly because you'd use the tv speakers and that'd all go through the hdmi cable and that would all be fine but because it's going to be the surface which is attached to the sound system the sound has to come out of here it can't then come out of all these other monitors because well they're they're not connected up to any speakers or anything so i've sort of created <laughs> A slight difficulty there that although I love the wirelessness of that I don't know in the end whether I'm just gonna be using a cable not sure yet what I might do I might either um, uh, adjust the video see if I can uh, uh, you know re render the video with the audio slightly offset in order to get that closer that sync closer together or I might just strip Hannah's face out and just use the NASA footage. That's another possibility, but seems a shame. Um, so yeah, so that's something I'm going to I'm going to dwell on and work on over the next few days and see and see where that takes us. Another thing I wanted to do was project text messages that I receive on my phone onto the larger screens. Now. A lot of modern phones have uh, WIDI built in, so I could project from this to the push to TV thing and straight onto the screen. Although I'm not sure how seamless the swap between using this device and using this device would be. However, my phone's too old. It's a Lumia 820, but apparently it's too old. So it doesn't have that technology, although it will work via USB. And actually that might be a smoother way of doing it. So. Um, what I do is I connect this up via USB um, I then need to run an app called project my screen yep Ta -da. I press allow on my phone and then there it is that's my phone on the screen. So, but that's great. I mean, it's it's on this bit and I can't find any way to get it to go onto the extended desktop screen where currently I've got uh, that video playing. So what I have to do instead, and I'll bring you in closer for this, is swap the projection here. So I'm just gonna put it to duplicate and you'll see that it's really surprisingly seamless. So there, it's now on the big screen. So I can go to messaging, for instance, and look, I got a nice message from my mum. So as messages come in, they could be displayed 
on all the screens <laughs> like that. And then to get back to what we were doing, I go to devices, go to project, go back to extend. And uh, Easy Worship is now throwing the stuff back up. So that's pretty flipping cool, I think. I'm going to have to practice a little bit with that to work out whether that's going to do the job or not. But I think that's pretty incredible. So, you know, that could work as well. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. But I still have an awful lot of work to do. But I'll come back and we'll look at this again uh, soon, maybe in a couple of days, once I've got the, the schedule and Easy Worship sorted out and I've got uh, all of the tracks in Ableton as I need them to be. Um, and then we'll look at how the setup's working. Uh, and the first time I'm actually going to be able to take it away and set it up somewhere is going to be Friday night. And we're having a quick practice. Yeah, that'll do for now. Cheers. In part five, we'll be looking at how it's all starting to come together in terms of the surface as a performance tool.